Hey folks, welcome to my garage again. It's uh, Sunday morning and uh, we're gonna take out the Windsor today for a drive. It's been a while, it's not been out. Been really uh, putting a lot of my time and energy into my 38. So it's time to get out and, and run the Windsor. And, and it's been sitting for a lot of the summer not being used. I, I do take care of the battery and keep it up on a battery tender. So today's topic, uh, we're gonna talk about slow starting starter maybe that doesn't want to perform well it's just slow to crank over a lot of people complain about their old six volt system isn't isn't cranking over fast we're going to talk about some of the differences is 12 volts versus 12 uh, 6 volts versus 24 volts and um, some people will run a, an 8 volt battery in their old 6 volt system just because it turns over faster uh, somebody might put a 12 convert their car to 12 volt if you want to do that that's fine um, you can convert 12 volt if you want to uh, both my cars happen to be at 6 volt. I'm very happy with that and I'll help you understand maybe why you're not getting um, a good starter performance and the engine's hard to start when it, especially when it's cold and or maybe maybe even when it's a hot summer day it's just not cranking over and you can't figure out why. So don't rush out and convert to 12 volt just because of that. One point that I want to mention is that as, as the weather gets colder and colder and colder your oil in your engine gets thicker and thicker. And that engine, the, the crankshaft's got to turn and cut through that oil, and it's got to pump it, to pump that oil up to the uh, to the valves and through the galleries in the crankshaft. You need to turn that engine over. And as the battery gets colder and colder and colder, it becomes weaker and weaker and weaker, and has less cranking performance out of it. So add that up together. Um, the other thing that can drag down your starter a little bit might be. Uh, when, when you start your engine, if it's a manual, don't just put it in neutral and start try starting it. Um, your transmission is in neutral. Um, the counter shaft and, and, and stuff is still turning and you're putting energy through the, the torque, uh, sorry, the, the clutch into the input shaft of the transmission and then through the counter shaft and then that's got to turn in its oil too and tranny oil is thick and when it's really cold, it's, it's really thick. So do your, do your car a favor. Good strong charge battery is going to go a long ways. Um, the right thinner oil for the winter, you're going to want thin oil, not only so that the starter turns faster, but also get that oil quickly moving and up to the important parts of your engine so they're well lubricated. And um, one of the best ways to measure battery voltage is to use the uh, hydrometer, I believe it's called. You measure the specific gravity. That's a good, accurate way to measure your battery performance. Because you could have a battery that reads, um, you know, 13 or so volts, when you first measure it with a with a, a digital multimeter, as soon as you get in and crank it over, it just falls on its face and it's not doing anything, and you can't really figure out what's going on. You might have a bad cell or a weak cell in there, and the hydrometer, you suck up the fluid in each cell, and you can read its specific gravity with the little floating balls in it. That'll tell you if you have a bad cell. That's a good way to, to troubleshoot for a bad battery. All right, so let's get started on uh, on today's topic. Um, and then we'll flash this baby up and go for a drive. I still hear a lot of questions and people asking uh, about slow starting. They've got their old 6 volt system still on the car and it's really slow to crank over. And a lot of people make jump in and make a comment and say you gotta switch to 12 volts. It'll be better. Well, it will be better. It'll be faster. The engine will turn over faster. But is, is that a band-aid to fixing why it turns over slow? Because when these cars um, were new, 6 volt is adequate. Really good. So I'll give you a couple pointers and some tips. We'll go through some theory, some, some things that I think um, and what I've learned over the years. So you can quickly identify a battery by how many volts it is by looking at the number of cells. In here, there are, this is a cell, this over here. The middle section is a cell, and over here is a cell. There are three cells. There are 2.2 volts in a cell for a total of 6.6 .6 volts here when this battery is fully charged. So a 12 volt battery will have six plugs. Three on this side and three over here. They'll be, they'll be smaller. They'll be six. Six times 2.2 is like 13 point whatever it is, 2 volts. So when we talk about voltage, we're talking about the, uh, the difference between the positive post and the negative post. 
there's a differential voltage here of 6 volts between these two posts. When you have 12 volts difference between the two posts, you're going to have more differential in voltage. It's, it's going to have more power, like cranking power, because it's going to want to rush fa not faster, but more is going to want to rush over from the, the positive post over to the negative post if they're connected together. You're going to have a large differential between the voltages of each post. 24, even bigger difference. So you'll find that uh, in the heavy equipment industry, a lot of big diesel engines will have a 24 volt system. And that gives a nice ton of cr cranking power and a high horsepower, high torque diesel engine, which is very high compression. So you're gonna want that voltage differential. 24 volts is gonna help it start quicker. Um, a 12 volt system, again, is more than a six volt. Um, most automotive vehicles, uh, even diesels, I've got a diesel truck, it's got two 12 volt batteries, but it's wired to make 12 volts only. I think it's probably out of convenience um, in terms of uh, consumer vehicles, everything is just 12 volts, easy to buy batteries, um, stereos, lights, everything's mainstream 12 volt in the automotive world. In the heavy equipment world, most of it's 24 volt. And in ancient uh, Mopars here and many other cars back in the day, it was a 6 volt system. And there's nothing wrong with a 6 volt system in these old cars. It's plenty. Now these engines are, are low compression. They're about 7 to 1 or so. 6.5 to 1 to 7 to 1 compression. That's the, the difference in the volume pressure uh, between the pistons at the bottom dead center and it's up at top dead center. It, it compresses that volume of air 7 times what it was when it was all the way down. 7 to 1 compression. That's not high compression. Um, these, these old cars are also a positive ground system. This is my positive post on my battery right here, and this battery cable goes right over and mounts to ground. Now, when we say ground, you may ask yourself, what the, you know, what is ground? It's not going into the ground. Ground is the return side of the circuit sort of thing. Um, a circuit implies a circle. Think of it as a circle as being a circuit. Electricity has to go from one side of the battery to all of your electrical components in your vehicle and it's got to return back to the other side of the battery. We call that the ground. Now instead of having a wire coming from every single electrical part in your car and trying to come back to this post here and return, what we do, well not what we do, what the automotive engineers did, is they took the ground cable and they either bolted it to the frame of the car or to the block like this. And the block and the engine are actually bolted to the frame too so it works itself back through the frame so an easy uh, shared communal return path to the battery could be the entire metal surface of the car whether it's in the trunk up underneath the, the, the seats the dash behind the dash the fender and when things are bolted like this would be grounded this is bolted to ground here any of these surfaces would be ground we know that this is ground this happens to be a positive volt, positive ground system, like I said. There's ground on my battery. And my uh, other car, my 38 Plymouth, the actually the the uh, the positive battery cable is actually bolted to this, a bolt on the side of the transmission. But the transmission is bolted to the engine, and, and the engine is bolted to the frame. So, like I said, that's our return circuit. So, if we have a six volt system, if you know Ohm's law, E equals I times R. You can do a little research on that. I'm not going to get into it here. Um, a 6 volt system requires twice as many amps to run an electrical device as compared to a 12 volt system. And if we want to compare it to 24 volts, it's, it's, it's half as many again. So, for example, a headlight, a 55 watt headlight, might use 12 amps. I don't know, I don't have a calculator in front of me here to do the math. Let's just go 6 times... Uh, or whatever. I'm not going to figure it out here. Um, but if you run a 12 volt battery and a 12 volt system, it'll be half the amperage of a 6 volt to run the headlight. Uh, and then again, if you run a 24 volt system, which we see in heavy duty, it'd be even half of 12 volts. So, because we need twice as many amps in a 6 volt system as we do in a 12 volt system, we've got to get amperage from the battery to the starter. The starter needs all the amps it can get. It, it's the most important job of your battery is to start your engine. It needs to get as many amps as you can from this battery. And amperage is the flow of electrons through the cable here and right into the battery. This cable comes off of here, 
goes to this little relay here. This is my starter relay, I suppose. And then it goes on this cable, follows along right to the solenoid. So, so what people tend to do is battery cables get old. If you look in here, they get crusty, they get corroded. This one's not too bad, it's not great, but this causes resistance. Rust in the copper causes resistance. And then the electrons can't flow through it. We thought, well, you said the electrons flowed this way. Well, they do, but remember I said it's a circle. A circuit is a circuit, a circle. They got to go here, they got to go to the starter, they got to come back and get back into the battery over here. And the faster they can do that without any hurdles or any obstructions, the quicker those electrons, um, amps can move and come back to the battery, the faster the work is going to be done out of something like your starter or your window wipers or maybe how bright your headlights are. So what people do is maybe they'll go buy a new battery cable because maybe it's all corroded and rusty down in this area or here or here at the battery. Mine's getting there. I might want to replace that. I'll go buy it. They'll go to the store and I'll just buy a new battery cable. And I, I dug around and I found some examples of different size cables here. So this is your typical 12 volt cable that you'd find at the store. And people will buy that and they might put it on their car. But the difference in size here is incredible. Look at that. I gotta be careful, I don't wanna touch this post <laughs> to my car because it'll arc. So they'll go buy a 12 volt size cable and then they'll bolt it up and the car is not gonna wanna turn over. It's gonna be whoa, 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 really slow. Because you can only slam throw many, so many amps through that cable and it's gonna get hot. So think about maybe trying to, to draw you know, a ton, maybe you got a gallon of milk and you got a straw, like a straw that they have at McDonald's, and you're trying to s slam through that gallon of milk and suck it through the straw as fast as you can. It's going to take a while. But imagine if you had a much bigger hose and you turned it upside down and the milk could flow out of there. It's going to go real fast. Same idea with these cables. The smaller they are, the resistance uh, builds up as the electrons try to go through it, and they can't they can't move electrons quick enough to make your starter perform well. Your starter needs big cables. So do not buy 12 volt. Oh, and if you're going to buy one, like if you go and you look at your cables, you might say, oh, well, this cable's fine. It's great. This is the one that goes to the starter. It looks great. But then look at the other cable. It could be small. Maybe just this one is small. And again, because a circuit is a circle, the power's got to come back through that tiny little cable. And it's still going to restrict it. So you've got to have good sized cables. Let's talk about cables. All right, let's talk about um, this heavy duty cable that came off a 24 volt system. It's used in the heavy equipment industry. Um, nice cross profile here. You can see this cross section of the copper inside of there. Um, obviously this smaller cable is going to have much less copper in it. This is not what you want on your car as a starter for six volts, especially. This will corrode inside of here because copper is very corrosive. So an exposed section of this copper will start to turn green and get crispy and corroded and that causes resistance in the cable. So electrons cannot free flow. And that's gonna impede the flow of the electricity to your starter. So you need good, fresh, soft cables. If you take this cable and you, and you, and you do this and it crunches and it goes, <coughs> makes noise, that's done. That's full of corrosion. Get it off. Get a new one. Just don't buy the 12 volt cable. We saw that here in, in, in my battery cable right here. It's slightly corroded. I think I'm going to replace that actually. My car still starts well and performs well, but it's, that's getting there. I'm, I'm not totally picky and anal, but I think I'm going to replace that cable. Uh, this is an example of more different cable sizes. When you're... Um, rewiring a car. I build my own harnesses. You can do that if you want or you can buy them. There's lots of good places. People recommend that you replace a wire harness in your car. You can buy one or you can make your own. This 18 gauge, 16 gauge, 14 gauge, so the smaller the number, the cable gets bigger. You can see this is really small. When I'm rewiring a car, I usually um, will use, on a 6 volt system, I'll use 12 gauge wherever possible. It just allows more amperage to flow through it and uh, gives me brighter lights, brake lights, turn signal lamps, all that kind of stuff. Um, I believe I use 12 gauge on my, my headlights as well. Just to keep my headlights brighter. I just took this piece of hose. There there's, there's two reasons why I brought this out. 
one is it maybe that's about the size of a double lot cable you can see it's close it's not exactly but look at the size of the diameter difference if this was a battery cable again more amps free flowing slamming through there the speed of light that's going to help your starter the other thing I use this cable for, this happens to be silicone heater cable, not cable, sorry, heater hose. When you're uh, making your new battery cables and you're routing them through your car, um, sometimes, depending where your battery is, this one's nice and it's up front here in the engine compartment. In my 38 Plymouth, the battery's under the seat and the cables come out to the starter. Um, there's spots, there's opportunity for the battery cables to rub. And I've slit this open. And I'll put it around the battery cable and maybe use zip straps or, or aluminum style like clamps or there's little straps that are aluminum. You can tighten them on there and hold it in place and that'll prevent the hose from, the hose will protect the battery cable from rubbing through. And that's so important. You cannot have a battery cable rub through because when it does, the voltage here is going to jump from this cable and go right to ground and it's going to be smoking hot and catch on fire probably and uh, you're going to have a serious problem. So when I'm changing this battery I'm working on, i got to be careful, I've actually touched the edge of this battery cable right here when I was tightening one time and sure enough it arced. It's going to happen. It's not a big deal. Just Maybe I'll go and I'll show you um, my 38 Plymouth battery cables. I put uh, double lot cables in it and I think looking back now I probably should have done one aught cable. The double aught is awesome, but it's it's stiff, and it uh, it's a bit of a bugger to work with. And the clearance can be real tight getting in and around things. So I don't know if you can see that. And see if I can get a light here. Of course, that's not plugged in. But here you can see this is double aught. It's heavy duty. There's my my coating over top of the battery cable there. And the reason I have that there is because it can rub down in this area. It can rub right here. I think get a flashlight. Try to be prepared for my videos. I always seem to forget something. Alright, can you see that down there? Hope so. The cable is larger than stock. I put a bigger double lot cable in there. And it can rub right here on the frame. And, um this heater hose that I put on there is preventing that from rubbing through. Left alone, left to its own devices, that would eventually rub through. And right off the battery post there, oh boy, there's going to be a fire. There's going to be spire fireworks. So no, you don't have to go to 12 volt. You can if you want. Here's uh, the cable from the battery. It goes up to my starter right here. And my hood wiggling again. You can see I've wrapped it. So for giggles here, I went and found my Easy Read battery hydrometer. Let's try it. Now this one has a weighted float in it. Let's just, just see what this battery does. So you pull off the caps. Air out of it. Look at that, I'm all the way up to 0 0.01, 0 0.13 specific gravity. In that cell, we're going to put that acid back in that cell. Let's try the next one. Awesome. Same thing, 0 0.130. Sorry about the noise in the background. That one's right up there too. Good strong battery. You might read 6 volts out of your battery, but then find that one will be low in specific gravity, and that's an indication that you've got a problem with that cell. So I did not start the car to move it out of the garage, I just pushed it out. So in my other video, um, I showed you how quickly my 38 Plymouth started. It has an auxiliary electric fuel pump. I hit a switch in the cab. I let it come on for about five seconds. It builds pressure in my fuel system from my uh, my tank all the way up to my bowl here. It builds pressure, pushes it through the mechanical fuel pump, which is down in the engine. So when you crank it over, you're getting fuel instantly. 
Now, this car does not have a backup electric fuel pump. I've got my mechanical pump down here in this area. And it runs off the engine, off the, off the camshaft. So this, uh, as the car sits, uh, fuel pressure just drops and, and it loses its pressure. So you've got to crank it for a while to get fuel from the tank back to the pump, back up to your carburetor before it'll start. So this car, I'm going to have to crank it over and over and over for probably a good 15 seconds, I'm going to guess, before it'll flash up. Choke works, but there's no fuel in it, no fuel pressure, until I crank it over. So I'm going to show you that. Um, another good reason why we want good battery cables here. We're going to crank this car. We want it turning fast to build fuel pressure, to get it up in the carburetor, to flash up the engine. All right, so let's, let's just see what happens. I, was, I had the battery on the charger probably a month ago. It's been sitting ever since. Let's see what happens. I'm going to floor it. If there's any fuel in the carburetor, I'll try and push it in the engine there, but I don't think there's much. Whoa. I, uh, I guess I had enough uh, fuel in my... Uh, in my system still, fuel pressure in my carburetor to uh, to flash it up just by getting in, pumping it twice, whatever fuel was left in the carburetor squished out of the accelerator pump into the carburetor and started the engine. Well, that's awesome. So there's cold start number two. Um, I'm gonna take the car out for a drive, then I'm gonna let it fully warm up and uh, put some miles on it. Let it, let it warm up here. Uh, the beeping you heard, that's my Bluetooth radio. We talked about that in another video, it's in here. It's connected to my phone. All right, guys, there you go. The importance of a good, strong battery, how the fuel system maybe primes itself, battery cables, six volts, cranking amps, the ground circuits. Simple system. Have a go. All right, let's start by drawing a very simple, stripped down, basic schematic. Now, sometimes just the word schematic intimidates people because when you look at a schematic, it's like, oh man, what the heck is going on here? I don't understand this, right? Well, in, with practice and with some studying, it's, it's actually, this is a very simple schematic. Some of them, they get worse as you go through the manual, they get more and more complicated. But the good thing is, is early Mopars, especially, you know, before uh, things got really crazy with accessories, <laughs> mid-50s back, pretty simple schematics. So let's just, just do a basic schematic. A schematic, the word schematic, um, is a description of all the circuits in a car. A circuit implies the word circle, a complete circle, continuous. So a circuit needs to be a circle. Just remember that. The power has to go and maintain a, a circle, a loop. It has to start somewhere. So let's just start with a battery. That's the symbol for a battery. Each little section there is, is, is considered a cell. I'll draw a box around so it looks like a battery. That one is six volts. So on this side of the battery, we got negative, and on this side I'm gonna say positive, because I'm dealing with a little Mopar. It happens to be positive ground. For electricity to flow across this battery, it has to go from the negative side and loop around and come back to the positive side. That completes a circuit. No breaks. So if a simple circuit is like that. And if you use a wire, it, only so many electrons can go through that wire. But if you lay a wrench across those two posts, you probably know what's going to happen. It's going to arc out and spark and you're going to have a, mil a billion electrons jumping across from the positive and the negative posts and sparking and arcing and you could actually weld that wrench that gets so hot. The electrons move so fast. Let's, let's just talk about electrons for a second. These things are whacked. They are like crazy little items that uh, we can see under a microscope, I suppose, I think, and they move at the speed of light and they're uh, positive and, and negative. Uh, the ones in the battery are and um, given any opportunity man they're gonna rush to the opposite side from positive to negative so at the speed of light they will do that if you give them enough room to do it like laying a wrench, a wrench across the two posts 
man, they're going to move so fast, they're going to weld that wrench in lots of sparks. So let's not let them do that. We put electrons into a tiny little wire, and we take that wire, it's copper, and we coat it. The old wires were cloth covered. Um, newer wires are like a plastic type, some kind of a composite cover that's probably heat proof. And we try and keep the electrons inside of there. And that's very important. You can't have a corroded wire and electrons can get outside of that wire. And I'll tell you why in a second. So we know what our simple circuit is. It's just a, a, a loop. So let's just say we're going to take the battery from the negative side of this post. And we got to bring it over to the starter. After it goes, the electricity goes through the starter. It makes the starter turn. It has to come back and return to the battery. You agree? We still have a loop here. Electrons go this way, then back out and into the battery. So, as we add more and more circuits, let's try another. Let's try another circuit over here for the headlights. And uh, a headlight here and a headlight here. So the power comes off the battery and goes to the headlight. Let's just say that's a 30 watt headlight on low beam. It's not going to work right now. This circuit is dead because the, the it still needs to return to the battery somehow. So if we take uh, a wire off of this bulb over here and a wire off of this bulb over here, we join them together and we take it back to the battery. Now it's going to work. We got two 30 watt headlights. However, everything that you see here is going to be on full time because we've completed the circuit. The headlights are going to come on and the starter is going to be spinning as quickly as it can right now and it's never going to shut off unless we disconnect the connection somehow to stop the circuit, to complete the circuit. So what we end up doing is we end up putting switches in. Uh, we probably put a switch on the headlights and we probably put a switch on the starter. Right? So we can shut off the flow of electrons. Now, I'm not going to get into Ohm's law. I'm going to try and keep it simple, but it's a math calculation. Um, uh, if we have a 30 watt light, 30 watts divided by 6 volts, that's a 5 amp draw for one headlight. Does that make sense? A 6 volt system needs 5 amps of electricity to light up that bright, that light properly. If we had a 12 volt system, which some people like to install, we go 30 divided by 12 equals 2.5 amps. So less amperage. I think, well, that's got to be better, right? Well, yeah, it works. It, it's less amps. You can run smaller, thinner wires from the battery to the headlights or from switches, so it's, it's cheaper. Uh, a 12 volt starter uh, system will crank over faster than a 6 volt system. 6 volt system is what these old Mopars came with, so that's what we're going to live with. You don't need to rush out and change it to 12 volts to make the starter turn over faster. We talked about some of the reasons why that is, but if you're going to maintain 6 volt, you just got to look after it properly, it's going to work. But with a 6 volt system, because the amperage is more, you got twice the amperage of a 12 volt system, you need to make sure all the connections, every connection everywhere, is tight and clean. If the connections become corroded, it compromises the amount of amps that can flow through, things start to slow down. So we get all these different systems. We got headlights, now we got tail lights, and we might have a, like a blower motor, and we might have a radio circuit. All these things got to return back to the ground, and it gets complicated, and there's too many wires. So what engineers did is, if you look at a car, let me just grab my book here. Electricity loves to move through metal. So this is a frame of a car, my 38 Plymouth here. If we take the positive post of the battery and connect it to the engine like you saw in my video, we connect it to the engine there, the positive side, all the wires that are coming off all these different circuits, we just need to connect them to the frame then, the ground side that goes to the frame. That's the connection for ground. Starter, go on the ground. This could be um, a radio. It needs to go to ground. Maybe window wipers. After you, after you have your window wiper system here, it goes to the ground. And this side of the battery connects to your block. That's grounded. The entire metal frame of the car 
is grounded. So it's ground, it's the return path. So the return path, the electricity goes into the frame, and the headlights goes into the frame, it might go into the car body. It's all metal, it's all connected. That's the return path. So you don't need all these wires going back to the battery. We just use the frame, it's metal. It works very well. However, saying that, if we turn on our headlights and electricity is flowing from the battery to the headlights, they're nice and bright. We got, what we say, five amps in a six volt system? Five amps. This is running along your frame somewhere, trying to get back to ground. Let's just say that the wire gets compromised over here and it's, it's kind of frayed and it's rubbing up against the frame somewhere. Maybe there's a wire running back to your tail lights and it, it, it's rubbing through the frame. Now the electricity can jump to the frame. And what's it going to do? Because the frame is ground, it's a return path to the battery. The electricity is going to flow out of that spot to the ground and go right back to the battery. And it's going to take a shortcut back to the battery because that's where the party is. That's where all the chicks are. You're forcing them to come out of the battery and they see an opportunity to get back without doing any work, without lighting up the headlights, they're going to take it, man. I'm telling you, they're going to jump back as quickly as possible via the frame to the battery. Now you get not only a few electrons trying to get out of that wire, they're calling all their buddies and everybody, there's billions of them, and they're going to try and get out of that connection and go back to the battery. And what can happen is the battery... Um, allows a free path of electrons, they're going to smoke through that wire, the wire can get too hot, it can melt the plastic coating or burn the cotton coating, the, the, the material coating on the old cloth covered wire, and it could catch on fire. So we want to make sure our wiring is in good shape and clean and working well so that the electrons do not get the opportunity to jump to the frame without doing the work because they don't want to work, they're lazy. So that's pretty much a brief summary. When you when you look at uh, elect, uh, schematics, they, they can be kind of intimidating, but just think of a circuit as a circle. The power has to come from somewhere and go back and return. If you, there's, there's a schematic and then there's a layout diagram. They're different. Um, this happens to be a layout diagram. It's not a schematic. Um, this is in my 38 uh, Plymouth. I photocopied it from the book when I was rewiring and I was making all my notes and comments here and labeling things so you can actually trace the wire as it's bolted into the headlights, tail lights. Schematics a lot more difficult. Sometimes when I'm doing work on my old car I'll lay out a relay so I can understand what it does, how I'm going to wire that relay to the headlights. Helps me. Because I'm a pretty simple guy. And I like simplicity. And then you get into the actual manuals here and you start looking at schematics, yeah, they can be uh, pretty intimidating. But, stick with it, do lots of reading, and understand how simple, this is really a simple system. And if you understand that, then you're going to do just fine. You can keep your 6 volt system running, and you don't need to rush out and go to 12 volt just because the starter's turning slow. Alright, so we're going to do a quick summary here of the top things that I think are very important when you're running a 6 volt starting system, electrical system on your car. If you don't know the condition of your starter or when it was last rebuilt, I want you to take that starter out and give it to the shop, take it into a starter alternator type place and have them rebuild that starter. Let them test it. You need to know it's in good working condition. There could be a short in the armature or the windings of the starter and we know what a short is. A short means the electrons can jump to ground and get back to the battery without doing the work you need them to do. So there's an internal short in the starter. It's not going to turn fast. It's going to just kind of growl along slowly and not start your car. Number two, proper sized cables. I want you to see, I want you to use either single lot or double lot. Double lot is great. A little bit big, maybe a little bit too heavy, not necessary, but minimum single aught cables. You cannot buy those pre-made at the parts store. I don't, not that I know of, because nothing's six volt anymore unless it's like 70 years old. So if you're going to the auto parts store and they have single aught cable, different lengths with ends on it, man, I'm impressed. The odds are they're not going to have that. 
So if you're buying a pre-sized cable, it's probably for a 12 volt system and it's not going to work for you. It's going to slow down electron flow. You need to know you have a strong charged, fully charged battery. Charge it up. Grab a hydrometer and measure the specific gravity of each cell and you'll know if it's a good strong battery. Even though you plugged it in and charged it, it still could have a problem. Hydrometer will be able to identify that problem and you can tell you've got a good battery or not. Cheap, easy way to do it. Unless you have a maintenance free battery with sealed caps and you can't really do that. I don't think you need that. You want to have tight, clean connections and grounds. I, I put grounds here, but all connections need to be tight and clean. Um, especially the, the battery cables. If you're going to have a big cable and get great amperage through it, but if it's all corroded at the end where it connects to the block of the engine, to the frame, or to the starter, it's going to slow down electrons. So tight, clean grounds. Take them apart, take a wire brush, clean them up. You can put some, um, what's that, dielectric grease on some connections if you want to slow down corrosion. Got to be clean and tight. This one, these two are kind of related. The outside temperature and the oil viscosity can have an effect on how much cranking power you need. We know the outside temperature, uh, as the colder it gets in the winter, sub-zero temperatures, the engine oil and the transmission oil get thick and they don't, they don't want, it doesn't want to flow. The viscosity is going to get thicker. Um, so when you're trying to turn that crank, that engine over, and you're trying to push the crankshaft through the oil and pump it with the oil pump up through the top of the engine or, or two other vital areas of your crankshaft and your bearings, it's going to struggle. The engine's going to be a little bit slower to get through that thick oil. Put your clutch in. Push it in. Disconnect the tranny completely. Because even if you're in neutral and you're cranking over the engine and your clutch is engaged, as I mentioned before, you're also turning the transmission, uh, a manual transmission, the counter shaft and the parts in the tranny, they're going to be turning in that real thick tranny oil, which is 80 weight or 90 weight. It's going to be heavy and slow down. Those things are all going to affect how your starter cranks over in a 6 volt system. So if I was to pick the top one, I would say that if you don't understand electricity or batteries and starting and all that stuff or 6 volt or you think that 6 volt is a problem you just got to get rid of it, the first thing you're probably going to do is go buy a new battery because you think that's going to, that's the problem. Battery must be bad, right? But that's not always the case. You could have a bad cables or you need your starter rebuilt. So if you've bought a new battery and it's still slow, you got to look at these other items. So that's a big one that most of the beginners will, will jump to. First thing I would do generally if I, I want to have good performing starting systems, I'll take that starter out and get it rebuilt and get it tested. If it doesn't need to be rebuilt, great. At least test it. You know it's good. The guy's going to tell you at the shop if it's a good battery or a good starter. And, the, and then a lot of people do not know they have the improper sized cables on there. Again, single or double lot. I want to see those on there. So there you go. I hope that was helpful. I tried to make it simple, strip it down. This is going to help you keep your 6 volt system on your car. You don't need to rush out and change to 12 volt just because somebody said 6 volt sucks. It doesn't suck. I have an 82 year old car and it works just fine. It's fantastic. I have no problem starting it. All right. Have a good one, guys. Thanks for checking me out. Um, subscribe if you can. I'd appreciate it. Uh, on this, from this image, it's going to be in the bottom right corner. That's a little summary of starters and batteries in 6-volt systems. Have a good one.